Welcome to episode 116 of the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Brightman, coming to you on Thursday, July 20th. Wanted to spend this episode focusing on how the Rutgers offense will be different this football season with first year offensive coordinator Kirk Shiraka. Obviously, he has a very extensive body of work as a coach and coordinator. And I also wanted to go through the personnel a little bit. I'll have plenty of, you know, positional previews, in-depth um, articles and stuff during training camp, which is about two weeks away. Throughout the month of August, I have a lot of things planned. I also have a, a football player uh, confirmed for next week, uh, which I'll announce once it happens, just because that's how I like to do it, um, because you never know. Um, but um, I wanted to spend today to kind of look at the offensive personnel look at Shiraka's background and discuss how I think the Rutgers offense can be different and be effective going into the 23 season. So in terms of Shiraka, and we know that Shiano's philosophy tends to be focus on the run, mistake free football, control the clock, let your defense and special teams win the game. Shiraka very much fits that mold from his time at Minnesota he also had one of the best running backs in in the Big Ten in, in a long time. And Mo Ibrahim, he really used him as much as possible. He also developed Tanner Morgan, who in his first tenure at Minnesota, you know, broke school records for, you know, single season records. So he has done quite a bit with quarterbacks in his career, going back to Delaware with Joe Flacco, Zach Terrell at Western Michigan. I think what's interesting for people to maybe think about is that his offense at Western Michigan uh, when it was PJ Fleck, what year was that? They were, I mean, historic. It was 2017. Uh, excuse me. Uh, it was 2016 when they went 13 and one, they averaged 41.6 points per game. Uh, they set program records for points, total yards, almost 7,000 yards, 75 touchdowns. Uh, and they only had eight turnovers. But what's interesting is that, you know, they were a pass-heavy offense. Zach Terrell was a the quarterback. They had um, Corey Davis at wide receiver. He was a fifth overall pick in the 17 draft. Uh, All-time leader in FBS history and career receiving yards and 100-yard games. Uh, they also had a, another receiver uh, in Daniel Braverman. They had a great running back in Jamari Bogan. Uh, he amassed 1,503 yards on the ground, but they had two 1,000-yard receivers. Terrell had a, a monster year. So that was a explosive offense. Um, so what is he going to do with the Rutgers offense? Obviously, we know how anemic they've been over the years. And in recent times, in particular, last year, I think one thing Shirak has proven over his career is that he's adaptable and he's able to cater the offense, his game planning, his schemes to his personnel. So what does Rutgers have personnel wise and how can Shiraka tap into that and how will it be different from last year? You know, and I guess you could share really Sean Gleason's entire tenure as offensive coordinator since Greg Shiano came back. I do think 2020 is a little bit of a, um, you know, on its own, a little bit of a unicorn there, outlier in terms of how it went, because it was less conservative. It was um, it was the COVID year, um, but that offense was fun to watch, uh, and I believe averaged twenty seven points a game. It was just Big Ten play, but that offense has some juice. Uh, how does Rutgers get back to that point? So, three key differences to me that I think Rutgers can utilize on offense that I think they will just based on how they've kind of put things together. I think the first one is tight end usage. I think Shiraka has historically utilized the tight end and, you know, getting Sean Bowman from Maine, someone that the staff knows having uh, been recruited there by defensive coordinator, Joe Harismiak, you know, he was really effective. He was no conference tight end uh, at FCS Maine. But, you know, if you watch his film, I mean, he he's a, he can make some big plays up the middle. You know, he wasn't just like a dink and dunk type tight end. He was get downfield 10, 15 yards, catch it in open space and, and, and take off, you know, and, and, and uh, it takes multiple defenders to get him down. So 
I think he's going to be a huge part of the offense in the past game. He's uh, been a solid blocker at the FCS level. How, how is he going to be uh, in the Big Ten? Remains to be seen. Johnny Langan, obviously, you know, he, he's he been a focal point in the past game in the past. Uh, he's been, uh, you know, utilized in multiple ways on the offense as a, you know, uh, under center. Uh, he's run the ball. He's, um, you know, obviously thrown the ball. He was a quarterback when he came to Rutgers and he has had his moments under center, you know, it, not just as, as a, you know, a gadget runner, but also um, throwing the ball. And then obviously he's established himself as a tight end now and, and, and a pass catcher. So I think you'll see, you know, Rutgers utilize some two tight end sets for sure with both of them. I think you have Victor Kanapka back who's intriguing. He's been injured. He's a big bodied guy, not a ton of experience, but has shown a little bit of promise in the past as a pass catcher. And then Mike Higgins, you know, is really, uh, there's a lot of buzz about him in terms of his development his second year now um, and, and what he could bring to the table. So I think you're going to see Rutgers give all those guys a shot and mixing and matching. And if they do have some two tight end sets, I think it'd be really fascinating to see how that goes. But I think that having tight ends more involved and a safety valve for the quarterbacks. Right. And I think that Gavin Williams, that obviously is positioned to be the starter, but, if you think about it for a young quarterback and even, you know, Evan Simon too. I mean, last year they didn't really, I mean, Johnny Langan had a decent amount of catches, but he was, it wasn't even called, you know, play calls wise. It, it tight end was not worked in, in a way that I think could have benefited young quarterbacks and having that kind of safety net. Uh, and I think that, you know, there, there's some, some versatility there in the position group. Like I said, with Bowman being able to, to get downfield, uh, Higgins is really intriguing. So I think tight end is going to be used definitely more this coming season. I think another thing that, you know, Rutgers fans have been screaming for is, you know, slants. It seems kind of basic, but uh, for, for a long time, you know, especially under Gleason, I mean, you never really saw slants. And, you know, I would be – I would say between uh, Jaquay Jackson, the Division II All-American, Nassim Brantley, the FCS All-Conference player, you know, Chris Long, who I'm really high on, uh, you know, Christian Dremel and Rashad Rochelle out of the slot. I mean, I think you're going to see them. I think the short passing game is going to have to happen, A, because I think that it, it, it's – it's going to be more manageable, right? If you want your quarterback to manage the game, short passes is uh, a way to be efficient and get, you know, if, if you're, um, I think the concern, valid concern with Wimsett is his accuracy. So maybe, you know, part of that is, is he was asked to do too much or, or, or too many 10 plus yard throws down the field, 15 plus yard throws down the field gets in trouble a little bit decision-making wise, you know, having crisp routes, having short plays, having, you know, it also takes pressure off the offensive line. Uh, I don't know if Wimsett, you know, he's definitely not a natural three-step drop passer, but I think having more slants and then getting into the running back personnel, you know, Aaron Young is a guy that has been effective in the past in short, you know, in the backfield in the past game. So, can they make him a, more of a consistent weapon? Obviously, he's got to stay uh, healthy. He's been injured in times. But I'm really excited about him. I think, you know, Al Shadi Salam, he's a guy that, you know, in the spring game two years ago, caught a short pass and went 50, you know, 40 yards or whatever. I think another guy, you know, could be a sleeper. I, I And I'm just – this is honestly just a guess, but Jashan Benjamin, uh, the, the freshman out of Florida, small, speedy guy. Who knows what they can get out of him? Uh, I think Kyle Manungai and obviously Samuel Brown will take, handle the bulk of the carries. But there's some versatility there at running back as well. Um, I think if Sam Brown is healthy and can handle load, I think it's going to be hard not to give him the bulk of the carries. But I think the short pass game is a way to get the other running backs involved as well uh, and also have a change of pace. So between short pass game out of the backfield, more slants and short passes for the receivers, Getting rhythm, right? You have to establish rhythm, and Rutgers is never able to establish rhythm in a drive. And I think for for Wimsat, he's got to be able to establish rhythm, and those are two more ways, I think, between the tight end, short pass game with the running backs, and 
you know, slants and short passes with the receivers. And then I think one thing that they have been working on and one thing that makes sense to tap into Wimzat's skill set is rollouts, is, is, is having him – not having him just drop back in the pocket and not just be kind of stagnant, you know, which we saw a lot of last year. And of course, you know, a lot of that I think had to do with his ankle injury that he missed three games on and then came back. And, uh, you know, I, I honestly don't know if he was fully healthy the rest of the year. I think he, I think he was tougher and gutted things out more than maybe people realize. Um, but that's a key part of his game, right? His, his, his mobility, his agility, his speed, his ability to turn a corner, and run. I mean, that run in BC was, you know, it was a thing of beauty, but we never saw it the rest of the season. So um, is Rutgers going to look to get him out of the pocket more to, to roll out with design pass plays again with tight end wide receiver running backs, having those kind of safety nets um, there and design rollouts, I think is a really intriguing aspect of the offense that we haven't seen, you know, and, and Rutgers hasn't really had a quarterback that, that could be a strength. And I think with whims it could, and I think, you know, you could load one side of the field. And I just think that those are ways that you will see Shiraka tap into whims at and, and try to get the most out of him and help with his accuracy and his decision-making and give him, you know, two, three clear options in that type of, of read. Um, and then obviously, you know, how many true RPO plays will we see? I don't know, but I, I, I think it's obvious that you want to see, Gavin have the opportunity to run either design plays or can his decision making improve to the point where when it's time to, to take off, it's time to take off. And I think that's going to be a key part of his development in terms of not holding it too long, not taking as many blows. Just listen, I, I, yes, running the running, there's a risk, right? in terms of getting hit, in terms of getting injured, but so is hand, sta you know standing back in the pocket and holding the ball one, two seconds too long. So, yes, he's going to have to learn how to throw it away a little bit safely, out of bounds. But at the same time, again, you can keep the defense guessing. If Gavin Wimsack can establish part of part of his skill set as a, a, a runner, that's going to keep the, off, uh, the defense more off balance. And – give Rutgers more unpredictability. So for me, those are all ways that I'm really excited to, to, to watch for, to see if Rutgers can tap into all those types of um, aspects of the offense that I, that I spoke about. Um, is it as simple as Sam Brown being a rock into a consistent rock in terms of being able to carry it 15, 20, 20 times a game? Averaging, you know, close to five yards of carry. And then is Rutgers then able to do those other things? Or are they going to have to establish rhythm? You know, is it a balance? Or are they going to look to establish rhythm in, in the ways I just mentioned? I think it's a combination of both. I think a lot of it has to do with health, just in terms of how Sam Brown is doing at the start of the season. But the offensive line, there's going to be a lot of pressure on them. Hopefully they can be improved. But I think that... The things that I discussed, right, utilizing the tight end, utilizing short passes, slants, running backs out of the backfield, rolling out whims at, design runs for whims at, those are all things that I think can benefit the offensive line and take pressure off of them and eliminate time that they have to hold the fort down. So, so – I'm very optimistic about the offense. Am I saying they're going to, you know, all of a sudden be an explosive 35 point offense, like, you know, anything resembling what uh, Shiraka had at Western Michigan? No, I'm not saying that, but listen, if this offense can just be competent and just be average and average, you know, in the mid twenties scoring wise can put together and sustain some drives. I, I don't know, you know, if we can, if it's fair to expect a big play offense, I don't think it is, you know, can Jaquay Jackson, Nassim Brantley, Chris Long, Sean Bowman, can they, can they produce, you know, big pass plays, um, runs after the catch, get downfield 30, 40 yards and catch bombs? I, you know, I, I don't think it's possible, but I don't think that's how the offense is going to be engineered. 
And I think that all, it's amazing that all those things I mentioned, right? Utilizing running backs out of the backfield in the pass game, utilizing the slant, utilizing the tight end, rolling whims that out, having design runs from that. I mean, if you think about the offense from last year, did any of those things happen? Not really. Not, not, not enough. And listen, I'm, you know, I, I don't think it's, I think simplicity efficiency and simplicity is going to be the key. And I think that's Chiraka. I, I just really, if, if um, I did a podcast earlier this year on his press conference, when he was announced, I've done some articles on, on just his, his philosophical take on the quarterback position and on the offense. You, I, I just really like the way he thinks and the way he approaches things. And I really think that those aspects I just touched on, I think those are all going to be elements that he's going to lace into the offense. So I'm excited about the offense. I can't believe training camp's less than two weeks away. Thank you so much for listening and watching the Scarlet Faithful podcast once again, and I will talk to you tomorrow.